Hey Manu. Aaron doesn't know LOLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLLL
Hmm, what to do? You found out. Yeah, chocolate orange eggs. They sound awesome. I decided what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fight some people online. Dark Souls 3. So I'll do some random invasions and stuff and we'll just mess around. So we will pause this. Yeah, the whole reason I did the DLC the other day was to get the upgraded rings for PvP and stuff. But I will dick around at Pontiffs and do invasions and PvP arenas and things like that and just mess around for a bit. But yeah, the, the DLC is well worth it because you get a lot of plus three rings and those things are crazy. I just had to do it without levelling at all because I'm already at the, the level for PvP. But yeah, Chloranthi ring plus three, steel protection plus three, ring of favour plus three. I missed the Havels plus three, where was that? I need to go and get that. Havel's ring plus three. Ah, no, it is. It's near the swamp. But yeah, plus three ring, ring of favour plus three. <laughs> and this is my character. So level 120 is like. The standard PvP level. I've got 40 vigor for all the health, 10 attunement for a slot for pyromancy, uh, 25 vitality, 33 endurance, and 60 strength for all the smashy. So let's go and get this other plus three ring. <laughs> so I need to go to. It's not going to be here, it's going to be streets, isn't it? Streets closest to the swamp, or is it in our wall? I think it's streets. There's another ring I've got to go and get here, and then we will go and fight people. So there was a bug ages ago for this game where you could reset the DLC. And I did it and then never redid the DLC. So I had to do it the other day. Right, so I'm at the swamp. It's where Lido invades, which is to the left, I think. It's over this way. Yeah, it's over there. I will be playing through this game on stream eventually. I've not decided what I'll do for the spec on it. I am tempted to like just let chat decide. Like go into character creator on the day and go right chat what am I playing? Right so the drop down is here. So, 
Where is this ring? Oh, I think I can see it. There. PvP stream, yep. There we go, Havel's ring plus three. That's what we wanted. And then back to the shrine. So now we have all the rings we want. Um, yeah, we've got all those. You can win the box. So I need to sort my stuff out on here. So I'll have my Estus. Blossoms for stamina. Some Kukri. And some fire bombs. Now let's go and find some people to fight, shall we? We'll go to Pontiff because everybody fights at Pontiff. <laughs> yeah, I am awkward about organising stuff in games. Like, you'll see me doing Dark Souls 1, like. Anything that I don't have equipped goes in the box and stays in the box. Or anything that I'm not going to switch to at any point. It's about the only thing I don't just dump in the box is the upgrade materials. But yeah, this is my stuff for PvP. So I've got Pontiff's Greatsword, which has the fancy fire attacks. I have this little shield, which you can block hand parry with, but it's not worth doing either. The only reason I have it is because it matches the look of the set, and it has an enchantment on it that slowly regens my health. I have my pyromancy in case I want to use any pyromancy at any point. And then, just in case somebody is too nippy for the big sword, I have my twin hammers as well. <laughs> I can barely beat Hollow Knight in the first place. No chance I'm going to be able to speedrun it. But what we shall do is we shall put sign down for a fighting. And now we've just got to wait. You can see my uh, sign in the top left flashing as well. That's because this is the big PvP area. So if I don't get summoned in through the sign I've put down there, I can get summoned in automatically to help people as a Blade of the Dark Moon. And I am being summoned to another world. There's a Dark Spirit, so somebody's used my summon sign. So this will be for a duel. But yeah, everybody uses this area just because it's like a little fancy arena and I think there's only one or two spells that can actually hit upwards so yeah he's tried summoning somebody else but it's not worked so I am a dark spirit at the moment we shall head over this way and see what he's doing yeah he's got a little arena going on Who's going in? Is it me? Eh, bugger it, I'll do it then. Kick his ass, sea bass. Right, let's see what we're dealing with. Big smashy hammer, frost hammer. With all the poison it. And I'm frostbitten. That's going to be painful. Oh, close. He must have like a pixel left. I oh, know he had tears of denial. I beat him. 
Sweet. So yeah, he had a spell on. You can see like the little glow that he has in... See the onion guy up there, the little glow he has on his se sensor. That's called Tears of Denial. And where normally you would die, that instead saves you on one health. So this guy's going Dark Blade. He's probably gonna be, yeah, Pyromancer. If he's full, full Pyro, he's not gonna have much help. Ah, oh, he got me. That was pretty handy. Right, next one. Yeah, that was just bad luck. He managed to stun lock me. Hoi, Killy. We are just beating people up in Dark Souls. Or trying to, anyway. Right. Where were we? Far more back down over here. But yeah, the handy thing with this area, uh, this arena is this little ledge here. There's only like one or two spells where if somebody uses one down there, it's going to hit people up here. So you can just stay up on this ledge and watch if you're not the one fighting at the time. And the souls drop right here, so you can just go and get them again straight away. But while we're waiting, let's look for some. Oh, that got summoned quick. Find some music to put on in the background, shall I? Hmm. Yeah, that summoning message was a bit slow. Oh, there we go, it's working now. Oh, let's see what we get next. Might even be the same bunch. It is. Same people. Right, let's see how these guys do. No, I'm not allowed to play Britney. Get DMCA'd. Where have the little talky stones gone? My turn, I think. Right, let's go. Hello! And he's got the full weeb outfit on. Like the Eastern armor, and he's using... Doesn't look like the washing ball, it's too small, but he's using one of the samurai swords. Yeah, he is. He's got the parry stance on as well. It looks like the blood sword, to be honest. Which means. Ooh, he's good. It's laggy a bit, but. Not much we can do about the lag. <laughs> Beth's internet been on its ass as well today. Ooh, that looked hard.
The only downside of Dark Souls PvP is when it lags, it lags hard. Yeah, it's usually, like, if they're lagging hard, you'll see them, like, teleport like that. Like, sometimes it can be really, really bad, and somebody will stood in front of you, and then suddenly they'll be behind you backstabbing you, but... Sometimes it's manageable, sometimes it's only a very slight delay. Yeah. Like, the game itself, like, the netcode is much better than it used to be. Like, all fights used to be like that. There is somebody who modded the P PC version to have, like, LAN. So you could collect, connect the game up in LAN and fight that way. And when it's like that, it's basically a fighting game. Like, there's zero lag whatsoever. You can do frame perfect dodges and all sorts. Yeah. Beth's internet's on its arse. <laughs> yeah, you can have decent internet on a rotor is about as good as it's getting and we've got just a guy on his own summoning me hello this guy is an actual dark moon Not doing much damage either. I just need to hit him a few times. If you done to it, Kelly. That always catches people. Backstab. Oh, is the stream? Flipping out. Your internet dying. Got him. Hold on, I will just check something. So I should be back in a second. And grab a drink as well.
Right nerds, next up, let's see what we get. Uh, soul level 120. Yeah, I just went to grab a drink and stuff. <laughs> right, let's see where we are. We're with the Onion Knight and friends again. Hi back. Yeah, on your night and friends. Is there anybody down there? Or is it just me? Hello. Hello. Uh, hey. fish and chips. Right. I shall drop in, seeing as there's nobody else here. Let's go. This person's going to try and parry. You can tell by that shield. And dead. Guys, next. That'll be Iron Flesh, which is why you can't move so fast, but it gives them tons of poise. Lightning Stake. Ooh. I'm not going to be able to stand through that. Right, his Iron Flesh has run out. Nope, he's not going for it. Opera cut finish. Now let's see how Onion Bra does. It's poisoning up. Ooh, that's an aggressive build. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Let's see who else is around. But the symbol is constantly flashing up top, but it can sometimes age, take ages to get summoned in for it. So I will just keep putting my sign down in the time.
<laughs> yeah, it's the only art. The only art I own as well. I should probably get some more. But I don't wear it very often. I'm just wearing it today because my hair's a mess after work. Where? <laughs> Drops me into the arena. Person I beat earlier as well. <laughs> And then we've got this full Havel guy here. This is full Havel man. Shall I fight the Havel man? Ah, she's going in. Yeah, that looks like Havel's set. Havel's helmet and chest piece at least. Do I even have the Cheers pose equipped? I do somewhere. There. Hank Hill isn't a pyromancer, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> yeah, uh, I prefer Havel over, to, over Gundyr. Havel has more of the fun stuff behind him. There is Hank Hill. Like Gundyr's cool, especially with the um, the whole champion aspect to him, where he's an absolute beast when you go into the dark version of Firelink, but I prefer Havel, just because Havel's a beast and killed me so many times in Dark Souls 1. Plus, I, am, I have been streaming my way through Dark Souls 1 recently and I am using Dragon's Tooth as my main weapon in it. I'm trying to remember what this bit is now. Um, oh yeah this is the Gw Gwendolyn music. Do the hidden boss that you do after you make an Orlando Dark. This is his music. Yeah. Like all the different techniques, because of the, the sheer amount of different weapons and armors and stuff, and combinations of spells, people come up with some really weird techniques for fighting. Mine is mainly based around catching people. So the little stomp that I can do gives me extra poise. So I can tank my way through certain attacks and still hit them. And I basically rely on trading damage and doing more than they're doing to me. Showing off, taking off all his claws when he fight dies as well. Right, my turn. Let's see how I do against Mr. Spearman. Go on, buff yourself up. Oh, 
Although Hank Hill isn't a pyromancer, so I'm already disappointed. Yeah, I think you can do it if you go for like Havel's Ring and Favour and stuff as well. But it'd be borderline. And with all the armor and stuff attached, it's. He's probably going to be higher than 120, probably around 150, like you said. What's he doing? Stop trying to kick me. Not gonna happen. Alright, he's back on the spear. He wants the reach. Right, let's try it this way. Oh, he caught me in the backstab. Didn't think he'd be quick enough. Oh well, you were a close one. thing that sunlight was always trying to show. Ah. So that's how you do it. Nah, I lost but it was a close one. I got beat by Hank Hill. Ah, it's put me down here again, why? Yeah. Havel and the other knights are all badasses. Like, you got Havel, who's literally called the Rock because he was strong enough to wear stone armor. You got Artorius, the Abyss Walker, because he literally walked into the Abyss to fight stuff and walk back out again. You got Ornstein, the Dragon Slayer. You see, you get he at least gets like a decently prominent role. Like him and Artorius get to be bosses, and then you have Kieran, the is it King's Blade? I think she's called, who's like the Master of Assassins. See, he's using the the roll that gives you invisibility. And that's a lot of fun. It makes it harder to guess where people are going to be when they dodge. So I'm trying to work out what weapons he's using. I think it's, it's Onagir and Obadashi, I think they're called. They're like twins. Um, twin katanas. <laughs> oh, 
Like, they have a really fun, uh, like, weapon art as well, but it's really hard to hit. Or he literally jumps in the air and, like, cuts a, a cross shape in front of him. But the hitbox on it is really awkward, so it's really hard to hit it on another player. That guy won again. Right, round two against this guy. Is this Hank Hill? I oh, know it's not, it's somebody else. Ooh. Backstabs. Not this time, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, that was painful. Yeah, it was. Uh... I'm trying to remember now. Like, they, they speculate that after the war against the Ancient Dragons, like, Havel was one of the people who spoke up against it. Like, you find out in, uh, in this one, in Dark Souls 3, that the Nameless King is the is the son from the first one, the guy who got cast out that got a war. And we find out that's because he sided with the dragons against Gwyn, but yeah, it's the, all the theories I've seen have basically just said after the war, Havel sort of turned around and said, no, that was wrong, we shouldn't have really done that. So Gwyn locked him up and just left him there. summoned again. Yeah, and yeah, he's cause the guy with his armor or like Havel himself, he's like at the top of a ladder in the same place in the Dragon Shrine or whatever it's called, Dragon Temple. Somebody just died. Well, the one I really wanted to see more of out of the knights was Kieran, because you never see much about her. She has the coolest weapon as well, she has the gold tracer. Right, who's going in? Oh great, I will. Who wants to come and fight me? Oh, they're trying to tell the new guy it's his turn and he just doesn't want to. Come on. Right. to stop getting caught by backstabs.
Yeah, uh, lag is working against me here. But I have clipped him and that's about it. I need to get used to playing unlocked again as well. So much easier to get around people when you can don't have to twist for it. being summoned again. Sorcerer. Sorcerer dead. Sorcerers generally don't have much health anyway, because you're going to pile so much into your magic, they tend to leave health low. Right, who's up? She was it, right. Um, magic users can actually be pretty good. Like, it's all about chaining spells together to catch people as they roll out of them, or... Well. That didn't last long. Full Sombra. Hi Greg. Me smash.
that right this guy again he loves that little spinning attack nonny almost caught him with it <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, usually magic is usually hybrid. Like most common you get people with decks and that magic builds. Yeah, fight club lobbies you usually find around Pontiff and places like that. Well, I say it, places like that, it's usually just Pontiff. <laughs> Yeah, that guy I might have to mix it, mix it up if I go up against him again. I might switch to the armors instead. Go for the quicker attacks. Now what you do is use the red sign soapstone. And people generally use that for the actual combat lobbies. If you just invade, people will take it as just a regular invader and you'll get ganked. So whenever I'm here I always do the red sign soapstone and I make sure I have my dark moon on. So if the soapstone takes too long I can jump in and help somebody as a blade of the dark moon. The blade of the dark moon. Yeah, it's an invasion hotspot as well because you've get you have to go through here for the story. It's a slow area. Um, you've got the I've got what they're called now, like the people who in the Pontiff Covenant. What's it called? Aldrich's Covenant or whatever that automatically pop in in this area. So they invade. And yeah, this is Majula. So I've just got a playlist playing in the background. But yeah, because you've got the Pontiff people here who automatically invade. Then you've got the Blades of the Dark Moon are set up here as well. This is this area is where you get the Dark Moon Covenant. So you've got those guys helping out. And then anybody else who happens to invade. So it is a big PvP hotspot. There's always people here. But it's also the best place for jewels because of this little arena. See how the weeb does against the guy I lost against. So I'm trying to work out what weapon he's actually using now. I think it's just a broadsword. But yeah, that spinning attack. Next time I fight him, I'm just gonna poison. Gonna swap to the hammers. Yeah, Dark Souls gets a lot of hate and it's not a bad game but like the thing I always tell people is that it's it's the in-between one so Dark Souls 1 was Dark Souls 1 is the original it's basically a follow-on to Demon Souls it's a bit clunky because the 
We're upgrading engines and stuff. But Dark Demon Souls wasn't really popular, while Dark Souls 1 was. So when they got around to making Dark Souls 2, they mixed up the mechanics and stuff a bit. So yeah, they just they had the uh, your health going down as you died more often, which is an absolute pain. Nobody likes that. But some of the other mechanics they brought in, like being able to be summoned and help people on every boss, even if it's one you've beat, that kind of thing. The the jewel wielding and weapon arts they brought in were really good. Like they cleaned a lot of stuff up for Dark Souls 2 that they ended up carrying into Dark Souls 3. It's just kind of the the middle child nobody thinks about. Right, I'm going to fight the magic man. Yeah, power stancing was always fun. Like, when I do Dark Souls 2, I'm going to be power stancing the Cestus. Along with a couple of other bits. Right, come on magic man, it's me and you. Ooh, that crystal spear. Stamina back. Delay it and got him. Yeah, Dark Souls 2 has a lot of the. Uh, it's just a person bosses. Is the way my mates describe it. Yep. Bye. I usually say Bloodborne is the best introduction for people. It is the most aggressive one, but it is also a lot more new player friendly. Hammer time! Might not work very well. Nope. And yeah, Bloodborne is most people's favourite. I really like Bloodborne. It For me it's like 50-50 between Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3. Sekiro I've only played a little bit of. Like my PS4 broke a while back so I was waiting to get a PS5 before I played it again and I've only just got the PS5 recently. So I'm going to start Sekiro again while I'm playing Ghosts of Tsushima at the same time. Yeah, Dark Souls 1, you've got to get all the way to um, Solaire to get your soapstone. While in... Oh! I'm a Dark Moon. Is this just an actual invasion? Yeah, it is. Let's go and help. 
Yeah, Dark Souls 2, you get it from Creighton and you can literally just run up to him and say hello. Why are you? This is my town. So this is why this is the PvP hot zone. You've got the host, you've got me who's a Dark Moon. You've got probably an Aldrich Faithful down there and a Red Invader. Waking up all the NPCs as well. Oh. Somebody from the Blue Covenant as well. You can get away. Yeah, Sekiro has like a... Quite a steep learning curve to it. Stuck in a corner. Bugger. Didn't realise there was a tree there. Yeah, I get that problem with games. Like, if I don't play them for a while, I completely forget how to play. It takes me a while to get back in. Um, Hollow, Knight, Hollow Knight is like that at the moment. I stopped playing Hollow Knight for a few weeks because I burnt out on it. And I am still stuck on Pantheon 3. At some point on my weekend off, I'm just going to like... Maybe not this weekend, but in a few weeks or something. I'm just going to spend an entire weekend playing Hollow Knight and see if I can't finally get through Pantheons. Yeah. Uh, they've introduced a boss rush mod to Sekiro as well now. It's like I recently picked up Devil May Cry 5 again, and I love that game. Like, it took me ages to get used to the combat system again, but I was playing through it as Virgil, and that was great fun. Oh, it's dropped me in the middle of the fight. Yeah, Devil May Cry 5 is another game that uh, I love just messing around on every now and then. Yeah, Hollow Knight I probably would not have got into if I'd have not had, like if I'd have not watched Arux and Greg and a couple of other people play it. Like, it's not usually my kind of game, but kind of got into it after a while. Right, my turn. I want to get this guy eventually. Yeah, some people, like, it's a weird thing. A lot of people get their backs up about it, but it is okay not to like a game, even if other people like it. Like, I really like Dark Souls 3, but I know a couple of people who just don't like this kind of game, or have played other ones and just don't like this one.
Yeah. Waiting for Elden Ring. Although I'm glad we got to see some more of it recently, even if it was a leak. Now, it's the whole hype around it as Dark Souls is a tough game and it can be tough but you can just go out grind some souls and get up to a point where like it's not too bad it's like it's the initial learning curve that is the tough bit like learning your way around the movement system and how to deal with stuff after that you're fine and there's probably like a dozen other games you can apply that learning to but I learned I applied some of the stuff I learned in Dark Souls with playing Hollow Knight <laughs> like Sharp Shadow the charm in Hollow Knight that lets you do damage when you dash uh, specifically when you use your your shadow dash thing is one of my favorite things so I'm pretty sure the only reason I beat Nightmare King Grim is because I had that charm on so I could kind of cheese stuff and just like dash through there he is we're gonna just have a jewel up here or we're going down let's go down He is laggy as fuck, but we will see what we can do. Dead. They always fall for the running combo. <laughs> Give me a salute before I go. But yeah, what, what I was saying, like Sharp Shadow on Hollow Knight is one of my favourite things. And one of some of the strategies I came up for fighting against Nightmare King Grim was to Dark Souls dodge some of his attacks. So I'd make sure I had the, the Shadow Dash ready and I would dash through him as he came towards me. And because I had Sharp Shadow on that also did damage and it just built, built up over time. Like, there's a few other Souls-like games I want to try, like I do have The Surge and The Surge 2 because they were both like free games at one point. Like, I think I've got The Surge 2 on PlayStation and The Surge on Xbox. I want to try both of those. I've tried Lords of the Fallen but Lords of the Fallen feels really slow and clunky to me. Like, I just couldn't stand playing it. And then there's a couple of others like, I've got Neo and I've started playing through Neo again. But Neo is a lot more like hack and slash based, it's a lot more about comboing stuff together rather than your dodges and things. Ah, we're doing okay. It's about 50-50. Although there is one guy I keep going up against who I just lose every time. And now I'm being summoned into a random invasion. So let's see how this goes. Go and rescue somebody. Or try to. The over this way. No, they're going to be back over here then, isn't they? Yeah. So yeah, in Neo you have to combo it all together. Yeah, Neo has multiplayer but only in the place that it summons.
But I play Neo a lot more like an RPG than anything else. I have not, honestly, I've not seen much about Neo 2. I will probably give it a look in after I finish Neo. Well, I want to give, um, like, Code Vein and From the Ashes a look in as well. Yeah, the multiplayer is, uh, well, I do quite like the multiplayer, but. I am happy to just bash it out as a single player if I need to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope they do, because like Dark Souls 3 has like, Dark Souls 2 had, like, the arenas of blood and stuff. And Dark Souls 3 had the, uh, the hollow arena. But that was more for organised stuff. So yeah, I'm hoping Elden Ring has, like, a Dark Souls 2 arena of blood in it, where you can just queue up and fight. Yeah, it's confirmed to have multiplayer, but they've not said what kind yet. Whether it will have invasions or not, or whether it'll just be summons or something similar. music is this? I don't recognise it. Uh oh. Connections dropped. Oh, this is the Blood War one. This is... Murgo's Lullaby. Right, is it my connection that's gone? No. My connection is fine, it's just being weird. Yeah, it's... Promsoft has pretty much done it the same all the way through. Never been much difference to it. Yeah. Hoi Manu. We shall see if the servers are being funny. If not, I might switch over to a different game. Seeing as this is pretty much just a mess around. Yeah, it looks like server's being funny. Right, 